Hey guys, welcome to Lovely J Podcast. It's Coco. Ooh, guys. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I am headed back home from the baseball game today. I mean, softball game. I keep saying baseball, but it's softball. I had two granddaughters playing today. And I enjoy sitting out here with them, so I'm headed home now. As far as my arm goes, it's a lot better than yesterday. I do plan on going home and taking my meds and uh, just laying back, relaxing. I try to get me uh, something simple to eat so I don't have to be doing no cutting or anything. So I'm relying on sandwiches because I just don't have the strength in my arm to to really cut anything right now. Last night was hard. I did I did try to cook last night. I was actually frying some eggs. And like when I went to go flip the egg, I found out that I couldn't flip the egg. Because I couldn't get my arm up high enough above the, the skillet to flip it. So, I don't know what's going on with my arm. I just know that one morning it was bloody, and the next morning it was, it felt okay, but then a couple of days later, it just, this excruciating pain, and then I couldn't lift it. I didn't know if I was having a stroke, a heart attack, or what, because, you know, that's what they say when it start hitting you in the left side, you know, that it could be something serious, and... Next time, I'm just going to go straight to the hospital. And when they ask me or, or say, well, this isn't a, an emergency, so why did you come? I just have to tell the truth because I already knew that my doctor might not see me. Now, speaking of that, I think what I'm going to do, because I don't like leaving things up in the air any kind of way. You know, I have not yet left my doctor's office. I haven't found another doctor. But I do want to make sure that we clear this matter up about this bill that is so-called mine and left over. I want to make sure that things, the air gets clear because I just don't, I, re, I, I can't say everything that I want to say right now because I want to save it for whenever I really do need to save it just in case if there are any extra ears listening that I don't jeopardize what I have to say and things get switched around, but I do feel like I don't owe this bill, and that's one of the reasons why I didn't never pay it, because I remember, you know, a bill being made, but I never understood why it was left on me to pay when I had Medicaid and Medicare, you know, because y'all already know, y'all know Lovely J, that's the name of my podcast, but me, Coco, yeah, I'm, I got some disabilities going on, okay, I might can talk, but I can't walk good, and I can't, it's, it's a lot of things that I can't do that I would say healthier people can do. Just like walking in that hospital, I was so short of breath. Oh, my goodness. I was out of breath, y'all. Anyways, I do want to clear that up. I don't want no, no nothing left in the air. As far as that little secretary or nurse goes, I don't have anything to say to her. I prefer, prefer not to talk to her because she tried to make things difficult. And it, it's not what you say sometimes, but it's how you say it. How she said it, I felt was disrespectful. The words were okay, but the body language was nasty. I can accept the words of you saying that you're not going to treat me because there's an overdue bill. But for you to sit there and smirk and laugh about it. Like it's funny, and I said it's not funny to me because this is my health. It's not funny. So to laugh about it, that's a whole nother thing. That tells me you don't care about my health, and you don't take your job really as, as serious as you say you do. That I mean, body language is everything. That's about like a, a doctor walking in and saying, okay, I'll treat you, but then every time you say something's wrong with you, he, he just kind of brushes you off like, uh, it's no big problem. That's your problem. I don't even know why you're here. What do you want? What do you want me to do about it? You know, I have heard, had a doctor tell me that before. He's like, what do you want me to do about it? He he was the professional, not me. But it just feels like this sometimes. And I felt like I stood up for myself as 
best as I could considering I was in pain. I wasn't finna stand there and fuss for a long time. I was in pain. I'm talking about this was like almost two nights of crying. Crying pain. It just got to the point where I was like, you know, I gotta go. I gotta go get some help for this. You know, what I have is not working. I was taking the hydrocodone. It was not working for me. I took that. And I don't like taking anything really stronger than that. I don't. Mm Mm-mm. See, because I'm an ex-addict, so I try to stay away from, from things that anything that can be addicting. I just, you know, it's bad enough to be sugar, addicted to sugar, but to come and be addicted to <laughs> painkillers is, uh, you know, they right there together, really, come to think about it, but no, no one is better than the other. So I'm already dealing with that addiction. I don't need no no medicine addiction. But I did want to get a safe opinion. I wanted to make sure that I wasn't having a heart attack or stroke. Because I'm going to be honest. Literally, I went paralyzed. It was like being paralyzed. I couldn't... I can say that I could feel... I don't know what do you call it. Because... I could feel pain in my arm, and I could feel a little bit of the doctor touching my arm, but I couldn't lift my arm. I couldn't lift my arm. So I don't know what they call that, but all I know is it was a painful time for me, and I felt like (laughs) when I took the medicine that I did take because I went first that morning to get my food from the food bank and I was crying at the food bank. I was telling my granddaughters, you know, I was supposed to be keeping them because they were sick, you know, with something else. And here I am, you know, keeping them and and they having to help me because I, I just start like moaning, just moaning and, you know, tears fall here and there. I started moaning and because I was in so much pain. And I was like, y'all, we, we got to go. And I just called the mama and said, look, I really need to go to the hospital. But that pill started kicking in. When that pill started kicking in, I was like, okay. I can hold out. Because I had already called in my doctor's appointment. While I was, um, before I had went to get in the food bank line. And they was like, we can see you at 3 o'clock. And I was like, okay. But nobody didn't mention anything about because you have a, a bill that we won't be able to treat you. She just says, okay, you can come at 3. And I'm like, why she didn't tell me then? And then she waits till I get up there and say, oh, that's because I didn't look at it then. I didn't see it then. I'm like, woman, every time I come, it's something with her. Every time, it's something with her. And probably the only reason why she's there is because she, she's probably, uh, I don't know. I'm not even going to say what I really think. But anyways, she didn't tell me to bring a payment with me so that I could be treated. If I had known, I would have. Y'all hold up a minute. Uh, I'm not going to be able to answer this. If I would have known, I would have. I mean, I would have asked my daughter, can I borrow some extra money? I only borrowed $10 from my daughter. Hold up, y'all. Okay, 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 I'm back, I'm back. Just making sure I'm still on. That was my daughter. Okay. If she would have told me, before we could treat you, please bring a payment, Miss Bowden. I would have asked my daughter, look, can I borrow five, ten dollars so I could at least pay something on this bill? See, the only money I had on me was like ten dollars. 
That was all I had on me. And that $10 was going toward, you know, something to eat. Because I hadn't had... I should have just paid $2 out of the $10. I don't know why I didn't think to do that. I guess because I was just so shocked to hear that. Because I had never heard that before. But I was so shocked to hear that. I could have paid about $2 out of the 10 that I had. But I didn't think about it. Because, like I said, I was already just so sore and in pain. Today, I am doing a lot more with this. I, I don't, the shot they gave me at the hospital is helping me a lot. It helped a lot. It helped me get it moving. I still cannot lift. But my thing is, all she had to do was say, Miss Bowden, you have a past due bill. Now, if you can just bring us something, we can go ahead and get you treated today. But see, she the one made a big deal out of it and all this. Hold up, let me go get her. And then the other woman says, hold up, let me go get her. Then another one says, hold up, comes back to that one. Hold up, let me go check out something. No, I'm not saying that's what I said to you because I'm not saying that because I'm not the one that said it. She said it. And I'm like, yes, you are. You said it to me. I didn't talk to her. I talked to you. So basically, it's this other woman that works in the office she don't like nobody you can look at that woman and tell she don't even like herself i'm serious that woman you can tell she don't like herself that's like one mean evil woman she only got that job because she, she knows how to insult people that that woman is mean she don't even give you a chance i guess she call herself being hardcore but that hardcore it don't get you nowhere because this new generation don't care nothing about you being hardcore we don't care nothing about that. We care about respect, which goes a long way. Now, if I owe this money, I want this man paid. And I and the only reason why, like I said, I hadn't been really paying on it like that is because I really did not feel like I owed him in my heart. And still, in my heart to this day, I do not feel like I owe him. Because it was too many stories told about how the bill came about. When that bill was made, that was my first time seeing that provider. My first time. Same office that I always go to, but it was my first time seeing the provider himself. I had never been to him before. That was my first time. And he was like, well, we need to see what all allergies you got. And, and I was really sick even then. Real sick. <laughs> And so I've been sick for a long time, y'all. At least that's what they're telling me, and, and that's how I feel. And the only time I go, check this out, the only time that they can tell you that I go to them is when I am really sick. Not when I want pills. Not when I want, you know, just to say that, hey, she, Miss Bowden came today. Not none of that kind of stuff, but because I am truly and really sick. That's when I go. As far as anything else goes, no. I don't just show up to be seen. I have to really have a problem going on with me. Because first of all, y'all, I ain't got nothing against going to doctors. I ain't got nothing against health care. I have nothing against nurses. I have nothing against paying out-of-pocket bills that are mine. But this bill here, that look like my son-in-law just rode past me. But this bill here, I, I just can't resonate with it I can't resonate with it because it's like oh that turn just hurts mm. it's too many different stories being told what I went to him for it should have been covered by my insurance carriers I've, I've never had this problem before it should have been covered. So here I am. Got to figure out how I'm going to do this. There's another bill. And I want... It's just so much into that. Really it is. And truly and honestly, if I really do owe this man, <coughs> he should be paid for his services because I respect health care. <coughs> you know how many people can't even get seen? Well, I know. I know now because I'm one. <coughs> but I respect health care. 
And I respect that if a man is work for his earnings and is higher, he should be paid. And I do agree, he should be paid, but I'm not the one to pay him because... I'm not the one to pay him because that was my son. Because I had insurance. However they filed that, I don't know how they filed it. I'm thinking that the same hateful woman that sits up in that office and sends somebody else to do her dirty work, I'm thinking she's the one that messed it up. Because she's the one that's always like, well, come see me, come see me. She may know how to file this and that, but she know how to lie too. She, she trying to cover up her mistake of how she filed that bill. And if it got rejected by Medicaid and Medicare, it was because of something she did. It wasn't something that I did or the doctor did. So I'm not even trying to be mad at the doctor. And I'm not trying to be mad at anybody else. It's, it's, it's every bit to do with the one that's in the building department. Now, I understand the front people, you know, they just trying to do their job by letting me know, hey, you got this bill that's due, and if you can't make some payments on it, make some payments on it. I ain't even mad with them, but I don't I don't care for that one, though, because she never answered my phone call. She don't let me make appointments when I call up there. She'll put me on hold and then hang up on me. So her, no, I do not care for her because she don't care for me either. And that's just a fact. She don't care for me, and so I don't care for her like that. The, the, I care for her as a person, but not as the one responsible for making my appointments. No, I don't care for that part. So we're just getting that out there in the air because, you know, she showed herself to be foul. She showed herself to be dirty. These are dirty workers. And these dirty workers, that woman in billing, it's all her fault. She filed something wrong, and now she want to turn the tables on me and make it seem like it was my fault. It's not my fault. I'm going into my insurance, too, and I'm going to see what they say about it. Because I remember when this happened, and I, I always did. I've always just questioned that bill. Because the whole entire time I've been going to this doctor since 2015, that's when I started going to this doctor. Not him, but the one that's over him, I started going to him, and then they assigned him to me in 2020. And that's when this mishap and stuff started coming up. Because that's the only time I could have had a bill for that doctor because he won't even work in there before then. I don't think. I don't think he was working there before then. It was I don't know nothing about it. Some ooh, some stinks. Anyways, um, come on, arm, make the turn, make the turn. I had to speak into my arm's existence. Anyways, uh, I'm almost home, y'all, and I just think that. I need to talk with the lady in building. I need to get a clear understanding of what this bill is for, y'all, because everything in me is saying that this bill was filed wrong, and because it was filed wrong, now they're putting the responsibility to pay it back on me because of what she did. And if she's made that mistake, ain't no telling how many other people she done made that mistake on. And I don't think it's a mistake all the time. Because we know all the time that we have people in healthcare who just want money for themselves. So what they'll do is they'll overcharge somebody. And then they pocket the money. And then they try to make it look like, well, she didn't pay this bill. He didn't pay that bill. I wasn't supposed to pay that bill. For one thing, I wasn't supposed to. That wasn't mine to really pay. Yes, I made the bill, but when you have insurance, there's certain things that insurance cover, and there's certain things that insurance does not cover. And the insurance I have, it did cover what it was supposed to cover. But we're going to see more into it. I'm going to have to call the insurance company, talk with them, see what they say. Because right now, this is, like I said, I don't have no problem with the doctor. Doctor's always, you know, just just been there to do his job. But I think the man should get paid. But we need to be clear on where the problem came in at so that this doesn't happen again. 
that's where I'm sitting at. That's that's where I'm feeling. Because I just don't I'm not getting it. You know what? I'm gonna have to wait till my son comes. Cause I can't even tote this bag. I can't tote this bag. I forgot my shoulder. I went to go try to tote it in. Can't do it. Something smells bad in here. It smells like a stink bomb got put in my car. That smell was not here earlier. But now it smells like it. All right, y'all. So that's all I'm going to say. Peace, love, and happiness. I got to try to get myself into the house. <sighs>